All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here. And one of the things that I was always real impressed with growing up following bodybuilding was the big massive chest that Arnold used to show. He hit that Definitely. side chest, that yeah, thing was big. Yeah. So what we're going to do today, if you haven't noticed, I got my man Ken Jackson here with me and Terrence Ruffin. We're gonna do a workout to simulate how do you get that big barrel chest. That big barrel chest is awesome, and a lot of people don't have that these days. Yeah, so, man. They don't true. have that. So we're gonna do a lot of exercises, and we're gonna explain how we go, or as we go, we're gonna explain how they work and how they help to kind of achieve that look. So I'm excited. This is gonna be a tough workout. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. So we're gonna start off with an incline dumbbell press. You can't build a big barrel chest if you don't have the upper pec shelf. Like, that's critical. So we've got a slight incline. If you come over here a little bit on the side, you'll see here, Terrence's elbows are not flaring straight out. They're coming up this way a little bit. That's intentional. Because what that's going to do, it's going to put more stress right up here on his upper pec. The clavicular head, if you want to be specific. But I want you guys to just do a little slight change with your mechanics there. Like how Terrence was doing. So you're not out here, you're actually right here. Getting a nice stretch right there, okay? So we're gonna start right here. We're gonna work our way up. Let's see where we end up. Nine and a half. All right, let's go to failure. Let's go to failure. Okay, here we go. Right there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's good. So, if you guys don't think some of the classic bodybuilders are strong, he just whooped me on these. How much you weigh? Uh, 180, 181. I weigh 225, and he just smoked me. That's what I'm talking about. All right, <laughs> Ken's going to do a set of 20. I'll give you guys a little history here with Ken. Ken has had two tricep tears, so I don't think it's necessarily the brightest thing in the world for Ken to go up to 180s or 175s and go heavy. So we're going to rep him. We're also going to drive a ton of blood right here in his chest. Ken's got a really strong pressing power. A lot of it comes from his shoulders and his triceps in particular. His chest is actually a little bit behind this. So we're gonna rep his chest really hard, get his chest to catch up with his shoulders and tries. He's not locking out either. So, so when you're watching the video, don't go, hey, so why is he not locking out? Because we want more tension here and less tension here. So we're gonna start off with a set of 20. <clears throat> Uh, All right, let's go, baby. 20 reps. Uh, up, up, Ten. eight, oh, uh, 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 eight, uh, A really good question I get from people is uh, locking out. Do you lock out on chest? Do you not lock out? Some exercises I like to lock out, and some I don't. We're going to do a Smith Machine decline press today, and I'm going to show you. I love to lock out on those. It just depends on if you can still feel the tension in the pec or if you kind of lose it. When you get to the point where you're kind of losing tension in the pec, then to me locking out doesn't make a lot of sense. 
if your goal was really just to train your chest. If you're just trying to train for overall strength and power, you know, I think a full range of motion is the way to go, but I don't think there's any like a black and white answer is should you lock out, should you not lock out. Some things we do a complete full range of motion, some things we don't. Again, just matters the exercise we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish. So on this, I'm just trying to keep tension on the pecs for these guys. We're just trying to keep stress on the pecs. Uh, we, we have other ways we can hit our triceps. So, anyways, that's a good question you guys ask me a lot. Right here. <sighs> Big set. Perfect form. Perfect form. Big set. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. That's it right there. That's what we wanted for Terrence. We wanted a big set of about eight, somewhere around eight reps. That's what we got. 20 again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. There we go. There we go. Twenty. The upper chest, we like to do two movements a lot of times. That area is uh is so impressive when it's developed so now we're going to a smith incline uh most of the time we do a barbell incline but there's people using it today sometimes you just got to improvise i'm not going to go over there and tell people it's my, it's my bench get off the bench um so we're going to improvise the barbells in, is taken so we're going to do the smith machine now on this one uh pay attention to the angle we're coming up high on our chest but we're not going down all the way what i find going down all the way it's a little too much stress for your rotator cuff um and we're again we're trying to just keep really good tension on the chest so you don't need to lock these out so let's see how these feel now we're going to do sets of six and we're going to work our, work our way up that weight's still pretty light right there. We're going with a medium grip here. Right there. Nice, basic, heavy compound movement here. We did the dumbbells. Now we're doing the, uh, it's not the barbell, it's the Smith machine, but nice basic movements here. See when he's lowered his arm, you can see the stretch right across there. It's, it's a really good stretch. There's no need to go all the way down and touch, especially when you're coming up real high. The last thing you want when you're doing a Smith machine is the internal rotate, internal rotation in your shoulder. If you're coming down and you start to do this, can injure you, can injure you pretty quickly. All right, so now we've made our way up to our actual real work set, and we're going to do a drop set. A lot of times. We do cluster sets, but I kind of like drop sets on the Smith machine, actually. So the very first set you do in the drop set, you want to leave a rep or two in a tank. If you go to like complete failure, when you drop the weight, you'll literally have nothing left. You won't be able to get any reps. So you actually got to leave a little bit in the tank or, you, or the drop set becomes meaningless. You can't get any more reps. So let's see what we got here, boys. Yes, sir. Let's go. Come on, Chuck. Come on. Good. Come on. Oh. Oh. 
Okay, Rat. Come on. Good. One, two, three, four. Good. Keep going. Keep going. One more. Good. Now, full range of motion at the top. I want you to flex at the top on this. Okay. Lock them out. Lock them out at the top. Flex your chest. Now, lock it out and flex. Lock it out and flex. There we go. There we go. Good, Terrence. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Lock it all the way out and flex. That's it. That's it. Come on. Up. Come on, hit it again. There we go, baby. Good job. There we go. Just a little tip here that we like to do on the drop sets. Uh, on the last set, you'll notice we actually did take those to lock out and flex. It just feels nice, the blood just pumping in there. So on that last set, go ahead and take them all the way up and just flex as hard as you can on every single rep. So one of the things you notice too in those, that big barrel side chest is not only is that upper chest real thick, the outer part, it literally looks like it's hanging, it's so thick. And one of the old school moves that I like for that, and that Arnold used to do a lot of, is dips. I do them more Vince Garanda style um, in terms of where I put my feet out in front. So what we do on these is we get our feet out in front and we really stretch our chest. So we really come down and stretch our lower chest. This is what we're trying to hit. This whole part of your pec right here. And what we do is we just go to failure. So I'm gonna get my feet out in front of me. My elbows are going out to the side. Work the, don't lock out, come just sort of lock out. You can just feel that targeting that outside right there. We'll throw a chain on him for the next set. We'll throw a chain on him for the next set. <laughs> We're not locking out. We don't want all the tension to go to your tricep. We want it on your pec. Good job. So we're actually, I was only gonna do three sets, but actually now we're gonna do four. Cause the first set, man, we actually got a lot of reps and I honestly didn't think we'd do that many reps. So we just wanna call that a warm up. And we're adding a chain just to bring our reps down. So I think I went from 15 to 12. Now I'm gonna add another chain. Um, these are awesome, man. Once you find that range of motion, once you find that sweet spot, it just drills that outer pec. All right, so our fourth exercise, we're training our pec minor. It's a muscle that sits, sits, under, the, sits under the big part of your chest, the pec major. It, um, I started doing these in the early 90s 
I'm not sure who started them, um, but it's a really underrated chest exercise. I've done these on a lot of videos that you all have probably seen, but think of it as a reverse shrug. So instead of shrugging up, you're actually pushing down. Underneath that pec major, that pec minor, the function of it is to do this. So just think of it as doing this. When that muscle pumps up underneath, it really gives you that barrel round look. So these are very difficult. Drop, flex. You can see how hard that is on your core too. You can see me shaking a little, but <laughs> it almost like, it's almost like a different kind of pump. One thing I would say for you guys that haven't done these before, don't wait until your fourth exercise like we did today, because they are really hard at this point. You want to be a little more fresh. Three sets of failure here. Actually, if you do them at this point, it work out two sets of failure would be good. Thank you, boy. Just hit the red button? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> That's it right there. That's it right there. The harder you flex at the top, the more it's going to work. You got it right there. Ugh. You got it right there. Ugh. You Ugh. got it right there. Left. Ugh. You got it right there. So we're going to finish off with some nice flies here. Now this is a nice machine. Arnold used to love the cable crossovers. I actually like this better. We've got the weight loaded on this machine so that you feel the contraction really hard. Once he gets up about halfway to here, it actually gets heavier. So it forces you to really squeeze and hit those inner fibers while you're starting them really well. And it actually lightens up in the stretch position, which is good. You want to keep your shoulders healthy. There we go. A lot of people will tell you not to come back real far on these. And I, I definitely understand why. If you've got a real heavy weight, it doesn't make a lot of sense to get that extreme stretch. But... I work a lot on my shoulder mobility with my massage therapist and I've got really good shoulder mobility. And again, the weight is getting lighter at the bottom, so I feel that stretch really good. It's an extreme range of motion, but sometimes those extreme ranges of motion feel uh, really good after you have a massive pump. And we have a great pump from all the stuff we've already done. So we're gonna do two sets here to failure and that'll wrap up our chest workout. This is by far my favorite fly yeah, machine. Like, the angle was it's perfect. Yeah. You can stretch. This machine, they did a really nice job on this machine.
All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that chest workout. Honestly, that's a little bit more volume than I'm used to, but I wanted you to understand, like to build that look in your chest, you gotta really focus on your upper pecs, that outer slab, um, that pec minor muscle helps with the illusion, and even those flies on the inner the sternal part of your pec. Um, those are all very important movements. You're probably wondering how many times a week should I do this? I think it's when you recover is when you do the next workout. So you might recover in three days. You might be able to do it again, or it might take you four days. It might take you five days. I, uh, my, my general answer to how often should you do something is when you're recovered. Because when you're recovered and the muscle's ready to go, there's no need to wait two or three more days. You're losing gains. <laughs> but you also don't want to do it again when you still haven't recovered. That's a bad idea as well. So hope you enjoy that. If there's other body parts you'd like to see me focus on, let me know. I appreciate all the support. We're still cranking the videos out. We're working real hard to deliver you good content. No gimmicks, just good information here and some good hard work. Uh, so we will see you next time. Thank you.